You're no match for us. Ah. This won't work. So it's a quick goodbye, is it? Have your way with me and then... Oh, no, 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 no. Henrietta, it's not you. It's not what I meant. I've written myself into a dilemma. Alone in a ghost town, surrounded by killer dwarfs, forced to the top of a very high building, no way down, Maury, waiting for me faithfully. I thought you said you were alone. Maury, the Marvel horse. Oh, well, why don't you just jump on your horse and ride away? Yes, well, that was my original idea. But you know, if I jump onto that saddle from three stories up, I'll be sacrificing the best of me. As it were. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. Mm, no. Hopes would be dashed across the Great Plains mm. forever. I have an idea. Mm. Why don't you take your mind off it for a while? Yes, there is something to be said for taking a breath between pages now and again. Come here. Besides the obvious, you may have just inspired a solution. <laughs> it's conceptually possible, and I might add a most novel idea, Ernest. Where did you get it? Oh, just lying around bed last night kind of came to me. Really? I get much of my inspiration in bed, too. A little help with mine, if you know what I mean. Might I suggest a design modification? What? You're ruining the aesthetics. Oh, no, no, no. When creating a device to impede the velocity of a body falling through space, it is imperative that aesthetics give way to practicality. Yes, but one cup just seems so... So what? Well, you know... No, I don't. Never mind. Very well. The Bartok Ario Retardant Descendant Parasol. I will begin working on the prototype immediately. Security breach. Third time this week. Edison spies? No, a moose. He's attracted to the grass growing under the tower. Well, that's strange. He's usually over here. Professor? <laughs> He's lost a lot of blood. Professor Bartok. Yes, yes, I'm Janos Bartok. Do I know you? The bag. Take it. It's gone. Oh, dear. What is it? It's a caudal vertebrae from a dinosaur. saying he was murdered over some bones? Not just bones, but clearly the most important bones discovered this century. Well, now, that's saying a lot. Late Cretaceous period. 90 million years ago. Well, that's before I was born. I'm not an expert, but I'd venture to say that this tailbone belongs to a hadrosaur. And if that is so, this will be the first specimen of its kind in North America. 
Tall tales, if you ask me. And I theorize that this man was trying to get away from someone who was trying to steal this bone. You have no idea. You see where this is going, don't you? Oh, yeah. Professor Bartok's getting up ahead of steam, all right. How do we know he didn't try to steal it from somebody else? Because he came here to me. He was giving it to me for safekeeping. Oh, yeah. Well, now, would you help me, please? Uh, oh, here we go. He's got the glasses on. I'm in trouble. Trouble. Now, what we need to do is that we need to be in touch with my friend, Professor Rudolf Kendall, in the Department of Paleontology at Braddock College in Wichita. Wichita. Wichita's in another state. You can't get anything by old moats, eh? It will be well worth your while. I spoke there last year, and this man could have been in the auditorium and had been one of my students, and that's why he came to me. I want some mud from under his foot. Ah, oh, well, wonderful. Shall we proceed? Ah, uh, Sheriff, now that you've taken charge, we know the investigation is in good hands. Make sure you take good care of our old friend there. No, no. We're here now. That's evidence. Professor? The Sheriff doesn't want us getting in his way, does he? Yes, but at least allow me to analyze. Allow me to assist. Be my guest. I got a town full of drunk cowhands to look after. Plus, another legend tour wagon packed with old ladies who swoon at the sound of your name. But, Sheriff, this is murder. Sheriffs do look into such things, don't they? Most sheriffs don't have Nicodemus legend to do their dirty work for them. Sheriff, we better get going. Those lady tourists are gonna start looking pretty good to those drunk cowhands by now. You remember what happened last week? Oh, he's right. I, I best be getting back. You, you keep me informed now, you hear? Well, Janos, good luck in your investigation. But, Ernest, what if some misfortune were to befall me? Don't you feel the obligation to assist and protect? No. Now where? Over there. What? Over there. Take it easy, take it easy. There, right there, stop, stop, stop. Oh, God, it's hot. Must be a hundred degrees out here. Actually, it's a hundred and two. But it's a dry hundred and two. What a relief. If it helps you to think of it as 39 degrees Celsius. Professor. This is America. We like our Fahrenheit here. We don't need any sissy European Celsius system to tell us how hot it is. The diatomaceous clay here clearly matches the mud found on the dead man's boots. All right, then it's a match. He was definitely here. Hey, boys, we've got horse prints over here, two sets. And if I'm not mistaken, blood stains. It's blood, all right. Well, if he left the horse and escaped into the night on foot, his horse might still be around, or? Bring it down a little. That's right. Now turn me around, starboard. Good. Good. Keep it steady right there. Yes. That's good. Ah, there's a campsite. I see a horse. Saddled, bridled, and close tied. Good. South by southwest, two miles. Come on, let's go. Obviously, someone else has been here. That's a fair guess, Professor.
Garros. Property of Miles McMillan. I think college forgot to teach Mr. McMillan the first rule of dinosaur exploration. The first rule? If a man pulls a gun on you, hand over the bones. Ah, yes, well, perhaps he was scared. There's been a lot of violence to other paleontologists, you know. Oh? Rowdy bunch, are they? I was thinking of the petroleum surveyors. Petroleum, eh? Yes, wherever there are fossils, there's generally fuel. And, of course, the next question becomes, who has the rights to excavate? Science for the sake of knowledge or industry for profit and exploitation? Knowledge versus profit and exploitation, eh? I wonder. Hmm. Well, we're not going to go any further tonight. We might as well make camp here. Camp? No! I have an engagement with my technical advisor regarding the descent parasol, remember? Ramos, tomorrow morning we will retrace his steps back to the dig. The bones have mineral deposits that could help us. Will you forget mineral deposits? Think dinner. There must be a restaurant around here somewhere. I'll light a fire to scare off any beasts. Beasts? What beasts? What? How could a place so hot a few hours ago be so cold now? Well, you know, the atmospheric shift on the prairies is really quite an interesting phenomenon, Ernest. When the sun goes down and the earth radiates away its heat and the temperature drops... The question was rhetorical, but thank you. You've sufficiently bored me to sleep. If this is heaven, you've mistaken me for someone else. You took a nasty hit to the head, and then Dr. Larkin gave you a double dose of laudanum by accident. Oh, Larkin. My life was in the hands of that horse hack. You're going to be fine. You've just been semi-conscious for a few days. Hmm. Would you like some water? Hmm. Semi-conscious, you say? And here I thought I was making love to a mermaid on the beaches of Ensenada. Was her name Maury? Maury? 
You kept asking for Moray. No. No, no, you must have misheard me. Mary or Marie, perhaps Maureen. Maybe I was just asking for more. No, it was Maury. You were quite clear about that. Did anyone else hear? I, I don't think so. Oh, good, good. Let's just keep that a secret between the two of us. Maybe just kind of hide it, and forget. But enough about me. Had I known you were the new nurse in town, I would have found a way to become sick sooner. No, I'm not a nurse. I'm... Oh, good. You're awake. Ernest, I want to bring you up to date. Excuse me. This is Professor Kendall, Miss McMillan. Ah, Professor Kendall has just arrived from Wichita. How do you do? Professor, Miles told me so much about you. But I had no idea Miles even had a sister. Who's Miles? My brother. I arrived yesterday from Sacramento to make arrangements. I heard how you were hurt tracking down Miles' killer, and I appreciate all you've done. Yes, well, as I told the sheriff, I couldn't rest until justice was served. Uh, Miss McMillan, I can't tell you how despondent I was to hear about Miles. He was a wonderful student with a brilliant future. I'm so sorry. And Mr. Pratt, no introduction is necessary. I have the entire collection of legendime thrillers. Do you? The bane of my lecture halls. Oh, I'm constantly confiscating them from the back row students. <laughs> How do you do? Professor Kendall is going to help us retrace Miles' steps back to the dig site. It is conceivable that the man who killed your brother visited that site. But hopefully, when we are there, we'll be able to find clues as to who did it and why. Of course, it's not going to be easy without the bones. You mean whoever popped me made off with those bones? Yes, I'm afraid so. But in the spirit of Nicodemus' legend, you supplied us with a singular clue by tearing the man's button off his coat. So as we speak, Skeeter is on the lookout for a man wearing a coat with a missing button. That's him at the table. Goes by the name of Larson. Dave Larson. Registered as an employee of Langsdale Petroleum out of Omaha City. Petroleum? Just coat missing a button? Yeah, it was until I took it to Ah Fong's for cleaning. So. Did our friend have any diatomaceous clay on his coat? Um... Dirt. Was his coat dirty when he gave it to you? Ah. Well, when you take a coat to the laundry, it's usually, it's usually dirty. usually dirty, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Well, this is where Nicodemus Legend uses his celebrity to cleverly coax his quarry into making a mistake. While I'm keeping him busy, you use your skeleton key, get into his room. You know what you're looking for? Dinosaur. You'll be wanting this. <laughs> You'll go far. to find its way into my hand the other night somehow. Lucky for me. Thought you might want it back. I want something of mine back. And what might that be? Incriminating evidence. Evidence, is that right? Well, I wish I knew how to help. You're the one they call Nicodemus Legend, aren't you? When I need to be. Called something like that. They sometimes call me that, yes. Finder of lost buttons? Not exactly what I expected from a so-called paladin of the prairie. Some cases are as small as a button. Some as large as a dinosaur. A dinosaur? Really? 
You know much about dinosaurs, Mr. Larson, Dave Larson. No, actually, but it sounds like a fine subject for one of your exploits. Are you looking for dinosaurs, Mr. Legend? Not exactly, but I know someone who was until he was murdered. I wonder why someone would kill a paleontologist. Well, some say petroleum surveyors don't like dinosaur explorers. And some people say that dinosaur explorers don't like petroleum surveyors. Excuse me, Mr. Legend, but... Not now, Skeeter. So I hear the boys back east are interested in the oil racket. Must be a lot of money in it. Mr. Legend, I need you outside. It's kind of... Sounds like you're interested in money as well as murder. Excuse me. Thank you. It's kind of important. Murder and money are too often bedfellows. What? Until we meet again. I'm an inch away from nailing that guy. I'm that sorry, Mr. Out. Legend. Professor Bartok insisted that I get you out of there Ernest. immediately. Well, let me tell you something. Ernest. I've written about some lowlifes in Ernest. my time, but that Larson is about as quiet. He's an undercover agent for the federal government. I rest my kit. What? I found a letter that said he's investigating the murder of Miles McMillan at the request of Langsdale Petroleum. Good job, I think. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, no, I don't have it. Do you have something? For oh, heaven's sake. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. So, so why does a federal agent act so suspiciously? I mean, why, why go sneaking around, stealing the boat, knocking poor Mr. Pratt over the head? Why not simply ask for our cooperation? Many good questions. Yes, but at least we have the bones. Indeed we do. Now, Janos, if I might have use of your laboratory facilities, we might be able to discover the bones' original whereabouts. Good idea. Why don't you go and fetch Miss McMillan? Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm sure Professor Kendall has far more important things to do. Taking care of the bereaved sister of the victim is a job for legend, don't you think? Oh. Meet me at the laboratory. All right. I hope that you will not take advantage of this vulnerable girl during her emotional state. Janos, if I can provide a shoulder upon which to cry in her time of need, how can I shirk my duty? She said to me that in your drug stupor, you are calling for your horse. Subjecting them to varying intensities of harmonic frequencies, we can shake off the microscopic outer layer of debris that's been gathered over the centuries, mostly smithsonite, but also some small particles of the indigenous surface rock. Yes, but it'll take us several hours to gather the samples to analyze. Excuse me, but there's no way to be certain that any of this is going to help us find Miles' killer. 
Oh, but that's quite true, Miss McMillan. But it is the next logical step for us to follow. Besides, in the interest of science, I think it imperative that we go to Miles' dig site before the people who killed him can establish a legal claim. Well, it may be important to science, but I couldn't care less about preserving this precious dinosaur. With all due respect, Miss McMillan, if Miles were alive today, he would certainly want... I think Beth is right. With all due respect. Janos, we've got a few hours before your test results are in. What say we take the balloon up to Omaha City, see if we can find out how Langsdale Petroleum fits into all this. Do you really believe a federal agent would help the oil company if it was involved in a murder? It seems hard to believe. Well, these oil people spend a great deal of money in Washington to buy federal influence when problems like this arise. Well, the bottom line is, they stole our boat. I, for one, would like to know why. I worry about you. Worry? Yes. You're getting far too good at this. Well, it's mere child's play. You know, Ernest, our recent series of burglaries have awakened in me the sorriest state of security in this country. Yes. I imagine you think you're the one to do something about it, though. Absolutely. I promise that I will not rest until I make it impossible for people like us to break into places like this. Good for you, Janos. But you know, as burglars go, our hearts are in the right place. You know, Ernest, I am developing a philosophy of safe cracking. Professor! What? Look. These survey reports, they're addressed to Miles McMillan. Stolen from him? No, sent to him, care of Langsdale Petroleum. Well, then, if this is his desk, perhaps he worked for the petroleum company. Yes, he's not the only one. Look who else worked here. Well, her name's Beth, but it's not McMillan. Langsdale, as in Langsdale Petroleum, no doubt. So she's not his sister. think you're doing? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. I feel as though I've let you all down. Nonsense. None of us had a clue about that woman. Including those of us who consider ourselves expert judges of a woman's character. But the bone was in my safe keeping. I just shouldn't have gone to bed. The greatest paleontological discovery of the century whisked out from under my nose. Oh, the wags will have a field day at my expense once again. I will not have you say that. Professor Kendall was a stalwart friend of mine during my tribulations with Edison. Your support has been... What? Uh, Unwavering? Unwavering. Well, we are kindred spirits, Yoni. Now, I, too, have suffered the slings and arrows of lesser scientists. Hmm. How do you figure Miles ended up working for Langsdale? I thought oil companies were your mortal enemies. Well, I find that impossible to explain. I'm afraid she didn't leave enough of a sample of the bones for us to analyze. Oh, oh no, no, that's not true. No, I've been studying the residual dust. Now, come, Yanni, to go. Hmm? Now, that's unusual, don't you think? Oh, yes. 
It appears to be manganese ore and red clay. It could be a residue of pottery. Exactly what I thought. Pre-Columbian artifacts were made with red clay and painted with manganese ore. The only pre-Columbian artifacts found in this region were from the ancient Indian caves in the Blanco Canyon. Ah. Strata surrounding the cave is most definitely Cretaceous. Stunning, isn't it? A complete record of geologic time. It's unfortunate we didn't think of this sooner, Ruby. Well, probably, but the important thing now is to get down to the site before those wretched oil people get there. Speaking of which, there they are. Bring us down, Ramos. Well, I'll do what I can, but there's a strong updraft coming from the canyon. I can't hold it this low. We've got to get down there. Don't even think about those wings. Oh, no, 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 that would be silly. There's so much wind, you'd go crashing into the rocks. It would be suicide. Thank you, but that's never stopped you before. Besides, Rudy and I, we need to be able to join you. Ramos, I want you to shoot a grappling hook into the mouth of that cave. I'll try to get closer, Professor. But the walls of the cave are granite. How can we be sure that the hook is secure? Ah, oh, well, Ernest will go first. He will test it. Oh, yes. Ernest always goes first. The hero leads. That is the cardinal rule of drama. Well, I'm sick and tired of drama. How about a nice little tone poem or a sweet little comedy with a dry white wine, s'il vous plaît? Your courage is inspirational, Ernest. This is as low as I can take it, Professor. Well, steady as she goes. Push it in, Rudy. I'm pushing. Firmly. Oh. All right. Here we go. Hold on to your hat. OK, off you go. And if the harpoon comes loose, the hook at the other end will prevent the harness from coming off the line. Remember, there's nothing to fear. Right. No fear. None. But, Janos, are you sure this is going to work? Oh, yes, we do it all the time. Oh, but actually, you know, Ernest, I was thinking that maybe uh, there's one other... Which was the granary, I think, for storing the corn. Now, we're looking for a, a protected area. 
The ancients actually thought that the dinosaur bones were from the gods, and they went to great lengths to keep them hidden from intruders. Let's continue. Under the circumstances, I think it would be more expeditious if we split up. What do you think? Excuse me, but if I understand the circumstances correctly, we're crawling around some ancient tunnels here with a couple of people wandering around trying to kill us. I say we stay together. Mr. Pratt, whoever gets to the bone repository first will have a legal right to a claim. Yes, well, that claim won't mean much if the first ones there are the last to leave, if you get my meaning. Rudy has explored caves all his life. He knows what he's doing. Thank you. Janos, he will be fine. Now, this is a tracking device. Oh. If you get lost, just flip the switch and it will signal us. How clever. All right, we'll meet back here in one hour. And uh, watch out for hidden chambers. let him go off alone like that. It was critical that we separated ourselves from Rudy as soon as possible. Why? I'm afraid that Rudy killed Miles, and we must share this information with the others. Hey, how about sharing with me first? The pottery dust that brought us here did not come from the bone. You sure? Am I sure? I'm Janos Christoph Bartok. Uh, if there had been pottery dust on those bones, even microscopic dust, I would have seen it. No, no. Rudolph had to point us in the right direction. He was using the bones to do that. Once the bones were stolen, he needed a new clue. Hence, the pottery dust. So, if he already had the dust? Obviously, he was here before. I'm sorry, Jonas. Yes, well. We really must find the other two before they... Before they what? Before a terrible misunderstanding becomes a tragic mistake. It's imperative that we discuss the murder of Miles McMillan. Fine, I'll start. You're under arrest on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder. Us? No, no, the one you wanted. Oh my. Mr. Larson, I presume that you're still in possession of the caudal vertebrae. Would you please hand it to me? I told you the Indians kept chambers like this hidden, Janos. This is Miles' discovery, isn't it? I'll name a wing after him in my new museum, although he barely deserves it, having made an unpardonable alliance with an oil company. He was smart enough to realize we could work together instead of against each other. You seduced him. You with your oil-stained money. Whatever you've done, Rudy, it's not too late. He did not deserve a find like this. Uh. 
Uh, it's just marvelous, isn't it, Janos? After an initial examination, I've concluded the ancient Hopi assembled it themselves. It must have taken them decades. Of course, I'll be able to give a more comprehensive analysis when I return next month and rediscover the site. We'll start to look a little like this fellow by then. As I'm afraid so, Mr. Pratt. And unfortunately, your associate Ramos will be meeting with an accident very shortly. I'm sorry that Miles dragged you into this, my dear friend. I'm betting that there's still a man of science there, Rudy. Nothing much left to bet, Janos. This bit, what about him? What if I took the bones away from the support? <laughs> you wouldn't do that, Janos. Put it back! There, what if I took another one? Don't make me shoot you! It would be better than starving to death down here! It's finished, Rudy. I guess we owe you an apology. We thought you and Professor Bartok were involved with Kendall from the start. The body was found at your compound. You were in contact with Kendall. And then when you returned to the scene of the murder. Well, we thought you were the ones who killed him, so I guess we owe each other an apology. Mr. Legend, I'll be sure the out-of-town papers spell your name right. Again. Always a pleasure doing business with you, too, Sheriff. My jail is your jail. You were a fine scientist once, Rudy. What did it get me? Years of frustration. A stipend to teach? It got you your good name and your reputation. You and I both know I have neither. Well, we aren't kindred spirits after all, Jonas. You never wanted the attention. I guess that's why I respect you so much. Goodbye, Rudolph. Make him famous in a book. Infamous, even. I wish you wouldn't, Ernest. <laughs> 